like this. Okay? It's time to make it count. So let's do this. Hearing that, oh guys, I don't think they could be any more up for a game than they are right now. And here we are for game four of the Eastern Conference quarterfinals. This is a survival contest, no doubt about it. I'm Kevin Harlan with Clark Kellogg and Steve Kerr. Joined by sideline reporter Doris Burke. It's the Chicago Bulls taking on the Brooklyn Nets. Now a chance to check out our starting lineups. And as we take a look here at Brooke Lopez, guys, give us some thoughts. And Kevin, what stands out to me is his array of moves down on the low block. Low post scoring, back to the basket game. That's, that's what he does, and that's a valuable weapon for a team to have. And, you know, he's also a tough, tough finisher, Steve. There's very little a defender can do if he gets to within arm's length of the basket. Taking a look at Brooklyn, they're facing elimination, and the fans in this building know that this could be their last game of the year without a tremendous effort. It's almost like there's no pressure now. You're down 3-0. You're in your home building. Just come out and fight and, and scrap and claw. See what happens. Let it loose. Let it fly. Well, that's good of you to look on the bright side, Steve. That is true, though. They can throw caution to the wind at this point and let it all hang out. Why not? And a foul called on the shot. Got him on the way up that time, so he'll shoot two right here. Bulls shoot their first free throw. First trip to the line in this one. So he makes both from the line. Here's Johnson. Doris Burke had a chance to catch up with head coach Tom Thibodeau. What he stressed to his team in the locker room was that they can't go into this game thinking they've got room for error just because they'll have another chance to close it out in their building should they lose. He said that would be the absolute worst possible mindset for us. We'll know early how they're thinking, guys. Thanks again, Doris. Here's lights out, and that's good for two. And guys, pretty interesting comments he had after their last game. Yeah, Kevin, he really walked the line between uh, confidence and arrogance. And I, I thought uh, the final part of his comment when he said, "Get the locker room ready," you know, we're on the verge of the celebration. I thought, I thought that went overboard. You, you know, you you want to be happy with your team and you want to feel the momentum going forward, but you don't want to give the other team anything to hang its hat on in terms of motivation and bulletin board material. I was going to say those comments may come back to haunt him and his team. I mean, you don't go saying stuff like that. Everyone knows this. Here's Rose following the score by Kevin Garnett. Just five to shoot. Boozer kicks to Rose. Garnett with the block. And there's the shot clock violation. Couldn't get the shot off in time. Chicago on defense. They lead by four. Excited about the win on Thursday. And guys, they could have won that game on the strength of their offense alone. It was that good. And to do it on the road, too. I mean, the way they just kept coming at them and coming at them, they kept that crowd out of the game the entire time. That's good work. Yeah, they're going to need some help there defensively. That matchup is going to be a tough one to deal with. And the Bulls making a change here. Green's checked in. Chicago's gone 2-2 two of two from three-point range here in the first quarter. Just over two and a half minutes played here so far in the first quarter. There's the pick. Six to shoot. Rose passes to lights out. Stolen by Pierce. Joe Johnson on the way. Kicks it to Williams. Back to Johnson. But Trey. And it's slammed in by Garnett. You know, he may not have the elevation or the hop. He doesn't need it, though. Big fella throwing it down anyway. He usually does save the high flying for the little guys. Clark, you're right. You know, sometimes it looks like he's pinned to the ground. But when he gets positioned like that, he can put it down. And again, Chicago. No good. Garnett's with the lead. Garnett with a screen on Rose. Williams dishes to Lopez. Down to five on the shot clock. 
The Nets need to get a shot off here. From deep, Johnson. Good. And the first time out of the game called for Chicago. Yeah, he's trying to take the wind out of their sails. They're on the wrong end of a bad run. Gotta sort things out. I think things were very close to spiraling out of control if it didn't burn one there. Reggie Evans is checked in for the Nets. Now here's Rose. He hasn't scored yet. That I'm sure will change. Rising high to throw that one down. Sky high. Fantastic one-hand jam. Yeah, what a way to wrap up that possession. Williams against Rose. Johnson outside. Back to Williams. That's in coming off an assist from Johnson. Johnson's got three assists in the game. The thing you notice right off the bat from the statistic just is three point percent. I mean, it's a terrific number, and it's a combination of things. Good shot selection, mechanics are solid, and his movement on the perimeter is outstanding. And no discussion about him is complete until you talk about his sensational passion. I mean, he is an absolute wizard with the ball in his hands. Boy, I tell you what, the D was way too soft right there, like Jello. You gotta do better than that. Clark, he's not the kind of guy you want to get in the way of. No, exactly. We're about a minute and a half into the second quarter now. Johnson left side. Clark. Ball's knocked loose. Pass to Willis. And that's out of bounds. Brooklyn will retain possession. Here's a look at the top three-point shooters in the league during the regular season. Here you look at lights out. One of the best shooters in the NBA. Top five in the league at this moment. Well, he's absolutely been a huge threat all season, and you can't afford to give him time and space behind the three-point line. His percentage demands that you know where he is and that you get in his face right away. Jaron Williams has checked in for Jason Terry. Jared Rose has checked in for Marcus T. Garnett with the screen for Pierce. And Williams backs in. We're now about two minutes into the second quarter. And the Nets miss again. On the perimeter, the all-star trio of Williams, Johnson, and Pierce. Down low, Kevin Garnett and Brooke Lopez. So that's the next spot. What a tremendous game for Lights Out. He has 12 points, and he's knocked down a pair of three-pointers in this game, too. Well, they might want to think about setting a few more screens for him to try to give him another open look or two. And the Nets with possession here. Trailing by two. And keeping us updated from the sideline, let's swing it over to Doris Burke for an update. Hi, Doris. Hi, guys. Lights Out in their last game against the Nets really lit up the floor. He finished with 34 points, and that scoring outburst set a new season high for him in what was a great exhibition on his part. A game like this just illustrates the success this team has enjoyed this season. What a special year, guys. Thanks, Doris, for revisiting what was an astounding performance, Clark. It clearly was one of those games that when we look back on his career, this game will be right there among the best ever that he's played. Well, he was in the zone from the outset. It was just one of those games where he was feeling it. Everything was going his way, and, and he attacked, and that's what I like. Once he knew it was his night, he just attacked relentlessly. Johnson with it. Butler covering. Garnett kicks to Pierce. Backs him down. Six on the shot clock. With his first shot attempt. And he didn't get quite enough under that one. Chicago's gone to three-point range seven times tonight. Knocked down five of them. Rose passes to Noah. Excellent D there from Pierce. Well, one of his issues is he's a player that just does not excel at fighting through contact on his... 